What makes me, me? Is it something that I can accomplish or measure up to or, or try to attain? Or is who I am something much deeper, something not visible? When we know that we are fully known and fully loved, we can know that it is no longer about us, but about Him. Nothing we add or take away from our life will ever change this truth. What if we were already enough? What would it look like just to rest, just to be who we really are, sons and daughters? Just that, to know that we are already enough to this intimate, loving, and all-knowing God. This is who I am. I am enough. Hey, I, uh, I want to share a story with you guys. Um, I remember when I was in middle school, uh, I was asked to come up front in the middle of a service and uh, read a, a Bible verse. Uh, and I remember being so afraid, so afraid. Uh, one, uh, you know, being a middle schooler in, in, a, in a group with uh, high schoolers, that alone, just like the attention going on you, is, it's, it's something really, really scary. And, uh, but really, the, the big fear for myself was this uh, inadequacy around uh, my reading abilities. Uh, I, I didn't really feel like I was um, a, a good reader, and, and I was really insecure about it and stuff. And so uh, so they had me come up front, and I remember just my, my heart beating out of my chest and just having such a hard time with it. I was like, oh my gosh, like, I don't want to do this at all. And so my mind goes into just kind of freak out mode, survival mode, like what am I going to do to like uh, <laughs> persevere and, 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 and keep going on. I, you know, I know it sounds super dramatic, but it was, it was, it was pretty impactful for me in the, in the moment. So I reverted back to uh, Hooked on Phonics. You remember Hooked on Phonics? It's where you like sound out every syllable and stuff. And it's like, okay, Mike, all you got to do is just, just go up there and you got it. You could do this. And uh, the Bible verse was, he would wash us white as snow. And so I went up there and I remember just, I was like trembling. I was trembling. And I start reading, uh, he'll wash us white as so now, so now, <laughs> uh, pastor Teddy was the, the youth pastor at the time. He's like, um, it's snow. Go sit down. Like, what are you doing? And I remember just being absolutely, uh, I was mortified, you guys. I was absolutely mortified in that moment. Uh, and it, it, it touched on something inside of me. It was this feeling of inadequacy or this idea that I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not enough. And, uh, and the inadequacy was in, in, in the, in the place of, of knowledge. I wasn't, I wasn't smart enough. And I, and I remember having these different feelings of really, you could put any adjective in front of it, whatever one fits you or you would like. It was like, I wasn't I'm smart enough or I wasn't fast enough or I wasn't strong enough or I wasn't uh, big enough or funny enough. It was just, it was whatever adjective, but it, it came down to this core thought or, or position of, I just, um, it wasn't enough is what I, what I felt like, uh, that it was, it was, it was a, a, a moment in all these moments of feeling just inadequate, just, just like I'm not really measuring up with everybody else. I felt, I felt less than you know, when I went into rooms and spaces. And I remember for, even from that point, um, I, I, I dreaded public speaking. I dreaded being in front of people. I dreaded reading. I mean, like, I remember, like, if you guys remember this in, like, school, they were like, okay, you're reading uh, two sentences, and you're reading two sentences, and you're reading two sentences. And so I would count around the room, one, two, three, four, and I'd count, and I would, I would practice those two things so that way I wouldn't be discovered again that I wasn't smart enough. I wasn't 
uh, that inadequacy was such something that I feel like we all we all deal with, uh, and then we'll we'll go and try as much as we can um, to fulfill that void, and even inside of ourselves. That like and what I started to do is like I'm never going to experience that horrible feeling of inadequacy again. And so I would start to do like exactly that ways that I could control that feeling of of I'm. I'm not enough. I'm just, uh, I, I just, I don't measure up. And so what, I, what we start to do is we start to find areas in our life that we do feel like we measure up in. And we're like, okay, um, I, I'm not smart enough. So I'm going to get really, 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 really smart. I'm going to be stupid smart. And, uh, and, and then I'll never have to feel this feeling of inadequacy again. Or for some people, it might have been you grew up really poor. Um, you grew up in, in poverty. And so you told yourself, I'm never going to feel this inadequacy again. And so you start building up money. You start building up, uh, for some of you, it might have been that you felt like you were um, deprived or you, like all your friends in the neighborhood had the newest, latest, greatest thing, toy, and, and, and you're, you're left with um, the, 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 the big ticket item from the season before or something, you know? And so you told yourself, it's like, I'm always going to have, have these things. But w- what happens when, when we start to live from that position? Let's just say, uh, for me, some things that I take uh, pride in, for example. The things I take pride in is, I, I take pride in um, music. I think, I'm, I think I'm really good at music. I like doing music. Um, I think I'm, um, I'm fairly funny. I'm a pretty funny guy. I think I'm pretty funny. So funny. So uh, I'll, I'll start to put these things on. It's like, okay, if, if, I'm, if I'm musically inclined, if I'm good there, um, if, I'm, if I'm funny, maybe, maybe at some point it's like I don't want to feel dumb. So it's like I'm going to start to gain knowledge and, and wisdom. It's like, okay, so now I'm, I'm smart. I, 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 got, I, got, I have some, some, some areas in my life that I, I, I kind of have an edge on. I can kind of figure out um, uh, maybe the feeling of inadequacy is, is of like I don't, I don't have enough money or something. And so it's like, okay, well, I'm going to start to acquire money. And so what happens is we start to put all these things on. Once again, I've kind of termed it, uh, I've heard a term to me uh, in the past of this kind of like this false self. And so I start to show up in spaces and, and I think that this version of Mike is the one that's worthy to be loved. And so I'll come into spaces uh, where it's like, OK, well, I, I got I got some good money in my bank account. Um, I got some I got some great jokes or uh, what's. Oh, I got I got a couple cool songs I learned or something. Uh, I, I know I know a couple facts about a couple things. Uh, sometimes it might even be like family dynamics. I, I take a lot of pride in who I'm married to. Uh, my wife, I think she's an incredibly intelligent. I think she's uh, a lot more attractive than I am. Praise the Lord. Uh, I think that uh, I, I take a lot of pride in my wife. And so it's like, okay, well, this is who I'm. This is who I'm married to. Or for some of us, it's it's going back to the knowledge thing. It's maybe a degree. We think that a degree is what's going to make us feel like we're enough. And so we put the degree on, and and we start to show up up in all these places and we think that this version this is the one that's good enough this is the version right here that is worthy to be to be loved Uh, this is the version but um, it's interesting we start to show up um, with uh, like a false self with this idea whoa I didn't even know it could do that let's just put this down over here praise the Lord we start to show up with this, this false self, and we think that this is the version that's worthy to be loved. But this reminds me of, of, of the word, the scriptures, where it, it, it talks about, man, I, I'll tell you what, Jesus didn't do a lot of hooting and hollering and, and, and shouting. He was very, uh, wherever he was, it's just like his presence is what helped people change. They would just see the goodness of, of him. But the times I do see an exclamation point, the times where I'm like, I see a, a word and then like exclamation point, like I'm, I'm not cool with this thing. It's, it's, it's hypocrite. He would, he would call that out. I'd be like, you hypocrites, you hypocrites. Uh, and literally that, that word, what it actually means, it means to wear a mask, to wear a facade, to, to try to put something on over who we truly and actually are. Whatever your adjective is, I'm not smart enough, fast enough, strong enough. 
whatever that thing is for you, and you think if I can acquire that, then this version, this version's worthy to be loved. But here's the problem is it is in definition to the word, it is hypocrisy. It means that we are showing up with a false self. It's it, we're wearing a mask. We're parading around um, thinking that this is this is the real Mike. This is the real me. And this is the version that is uh, that is enough. And, and I'm reminded of of at the very beginning of time, we we we've been we've been opening up all, the, all these different subjects. And we even talked about the fall of man, um, about this idea of being known. And, and even before that, even before the fall of man, at the very inception of humanity, we get this verse in, in Genesis in chapter one and starting in verse uh, 26. It says this, then God said, let us make man in, in our image. Let's just get this for a second. God says, let us make man in our image. Let us make man in our image. After our likeness, may he look like us. May, we, may he bear our image. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the, of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And then uh, I want to just focus in right here. It says that so God created. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female he created them. At the very, very beginning of time, when God created humanity, when he created both you and I, created, created, created. Before anything else we could put over the top of us to make us feel like we are enough, he says this word three times. This word three times that he created. Now, the, the number three is, a, is, is just so rich in Scripture. One of the things that's really cool about uh, studying the Bible and, and starting to get down into these different layers is you actually begin to see patterns and, and traits, and, and the one will actually interpret the next. And, and what's so beautiful about this idea of three is we see this number pop up all throughout the Bible. We see the number three all throughout the Bible. One, one example, I mean, one of the biggest ones we can think about is, is the Godhead. The Godhead three in one. Father... The Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. And what does this, what does this represent? That, that the, the perfect, the complete, another uh, uh, a beautiful example we can see in the scripture is that he rose on the third day. Jesus rose on the third day. That he did a complete work. Another uh, example that we can think of and, and look to is, is when even when Jesus went and was tempted, it says that he went out in the wilderness. By the way, just a little little nugget. Um, when when Jesus went to to change his environment, he didn't go he didn't go anywhere. He actually went out to the wilderness and prayed. Uh, some some of us we need we need some some serious change in in our environment. Uh, and uh, if I can just encourage us, the the way that's actually changed. It's through prayer, through seeking him. Uh, uh, that's just your little, your little nugget. If you're having a hard time with family, uh, maybe work, things like that. God, actually, the way that Jesus did stuff is he, he went out and prayed. But it, that's just your little nugget. But on top of that, uh, it says that uh, the enemy, he, he tempted him three times. Jesus was tempted three times. And, and the way that Jesus combated that was with three verses. Uh, that it's it, it, over and over and over and over throughout the gospel, we see this idea of three, and what three represents is completion. That it's a complete thing. That it's a completed work. So often we feel like um, we're not complete. Uh, we feel inadequate. Um, we feel uh, like we don't measure up. And the core of it is we just don't really feel like we're enough where we're at, who we are. We, we just don't measure up. And that energy and that, 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 that thing that we think is truth, is, it's so far from the actual truth. It's this, it's this false self that we think that we can create something outside of what we were created in the first place. And then that's the version that's worthy to be loved. All of those things that we add to our life 
It is to live a life of excellence, that we could have an excellent life here on this earth. But it does not change who we are. No matter what we add to our life or and sometimes subtract from our life, the essence of who we are is this, at the very inception of time, is this, that we are image bearers. That we mark the image of our Creator. And not only do we mark the, the image of our Creator, He created us. He created us. He created us. When God created you and when he created me, he did a complete work. There's nothing lacking in you. There's nothing void in you. There's nothing in you that isn't worthy of love. You being just you, you are enough. And anything that you can try to add to your life is merely hypocrisy. It is to wear a mask. If, if that's what makes us feel like we're enough, what happens when that's gone? What happens when the thing that made me feel like enough is gone? What if, what if for me with music, something happens and, and I lose my voice? What if something happens where I put a lot of money into into an investment and I lost all my money. What happens to me? I mean, God forbid if my wife passes. What happens? What's, what's left of Mike when all these things that I think make me me, what happens when they're not there? I want to share another story with you guys. Um, it's the story of my, my grandfather. My grandfather uh, was one of the most loving, amazing men in my life. Just one of those, one of those I, I'm so grateful for the, the, the example that I had of what it looked like um, to just love your wife, uh, your life well, your wife and, and your life well. I, I'm just so grateful that I had that example uh, in my life from more than one man, and one, more than one man, my, my father and my grandfather. And, and uh, what's so beautiful about my, my grandfather was he, was he was just a man of integrity and honor. But the, the problem was is he, he, wasn't, he wasn't a Christ follower. He, was, he wasn't a believer. Um, but I believe in, in any situation, in any, at any point in your life, there's something that you hold to a higher value, something that essentially has your gaze, your attention, your, your adoration. Um, and it might be the, the thing that you so seek and strive after that you feel like if I got that thing, then I would be enough. And for my grandfather, I don't know the motive was behind it, but for him very much so, the, his, his God in a sense, the thing that he, he, he took so much pride around, was knowledge, which was education. He, he was a very educated man. He went on to be a teacher for many years, and he went on to uh, be a principal. He was, his whole life was around this idea of, of education, the, uh, the, the pursuit of knowledge. He was really smart, very smart, witty man, and, and, uh, and that was, that was, that's what kind of made him him, is what he felt like. And, and specifically in the area of English. He was an English teacher. He was, he was very well versed. I mean, that's all they did is they just read and, uh, and they just, they loved it. And so at the end of my life, my, or not my life, at the end of my grandfather's life, uh, he ended up having a stroke. And I don't, I don't believe in any stretch of the imagination that God uses um, evil to teach us something, but I do believe that he'll work all things together for the good of those who love him. We've been praying for Grandpa for years and years and years, and uh, and this situation opened up itself where my grandfather was open to hear the gospel. Because so, what happened for him was when he had a stroke, the thing that was that made him him, the thing that he felt like his his identity, what made him feel like who he was was language was being able to speak. And when he had his, his stroke, unfortunately what happened was all the wires, they, they went cross, and so he, he wasn't able to communicate anymore. And, and my mom shares the story of how she went um, to talk to my grandfather, and, uh, and he tried to talk, and it's just like everything was cross. So he would try to say one thing, but another thing would come out. He'd try to say your name, and he'd say toaster oven or something. It was just everything was cross. And, and, uh, and so... Uh, he tried to he tried to do what he did, and that was communicate. And he couldn't anymore. And and he's, my grandfather, he's a World War II veteran. He was he was a loving man, but I never saw my grandfather cry ever. And uh, and my mom was trying to talk with him, and and she she asked him, um, "Is everything okay?" And then she noticed that he was crying, and 
And, uh, and when he was crying, um, she said, Arlen, are, are you okay? And, and he just shook his head, no, I'm not okay. And in that moment, my mom said, hey, are you, are you ready to accept Jesus? And he just shook his head, yes, I was ready to accept Jesus. And in this, in this story, the reason I even bring it up is because for, for myself and many of us, we, we have something in our lives that make us feel like we measure up. But what if that thing is, is gone? What's left? Who you are, all by yourself, is enough. Nothing that you can do to perform or try or just, just try to do. That's not what makes you you. There's something so much greater at work. In Romans in chapter 8, Romans in chapter 8, um, in verse 15, it says this. It says, for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons. By whom we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. I love how it's read in the message version, it says it this way. It says that God's spirit touches our spirit and confirms who we really are. We know who he is and we know who we are. Who are we? Father and children. This is who we really are. Father and children. And we know we are going to get exactly what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. I mean, even in that verbiage, it's like in our flawed, broken self and in, 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 this, in this, 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 this position of feeling inadequate and not enough. And just like, just like the story we shared last week with the son that just said, I, I, I've sinned against you, the, the prodigal son, uh, that I've sinned against you and, and, and I'm not worthy to be, I'm not worthy. It's even the same position even now where we could feel this position of uh, when we say, you're going to get exactly what's coming to you and we would feel like I deserve nothing. I, des I, don't, I don't deserve his goodness. But this is, this is the grace and the goodness of God. It says that, Oh, you're going to get exactly what's coming to you. You ready for it? Exactly what's an unbelievable inheritance. Whew. The goodness of God in that. Because, and it's only because of this. It's because we would really see who we truly are. Father and child. The goodness of God. That we are his children. The only thing that you are is nothing that you could try to do or perform or try to be. The thing that you are is you're his. You're his. That we are his. And in and, and this, that I'm the image bearer of God, that you're the image bearer of God, that we are enough. And from this position, we can live a life of excellence. But when we're trying to be excellent so we can earn a position at the table, so we can earn a position in his house, that's not what it's about. We, we just are. And as sons and daughters, we, have, we now have this revelation of who we are, and so it changes the way that we interact with the world. It changes the way that we interact in our families. It changes the way we interact with loved ones. It changes the way that we interact with people that we have a hard time with. It changes something when you know how loved you are. Family, sons and daughters, you are strong. You are known. You are loved. And you will always be enough. I pray this week that this is something that just washes over you. That you would actually feel and see the way that God sees you. I love you guys so much. And I pray that this helps you so that you can just, just be in his presence. We don't have to show up with masks any longer. We don't have to show up 
with these false selves, but we could show up who we, who we really are. It is. I love you guys. I pray that you guys have a great week, and I pray that you guys have a great conversation.